Hello everyone, Foxy here, and welcome to Mostly Mental. Today, I'd like to start a mini-series on game theory, and there's no better place to begin than with the game of Nim. It's a game for two players, and the rules are pretty simple. There are three piles, with three, four, and five counters, respectively. On your turn, you can remove as many counters as you want from any one pile and whoever takes the last counter wins. In order to demonstrate this, I'll need an opponent. So, say hello to Aurora. A typical game may go as follows. I take two counters from the pile in the middle, then Aurora takes four from the pile on the end, then I take three, and she takes one, then I take one, and she takes the last one and wins. Good game. Now, I'd like to challenge Aurora to a rematch, but she doesn't make mistakes, and I don't want to lose again. So, I'll need a foolproof strategy. Is there some way for me to guarantee a win, or am I doomed to be outfoxed at every turn? Nim is a little complicated to start with, so let's look at something a bit simpler, known as the takeaway game. In this game, there's only one pile of counters. On each turn, you're allowed to remove one or remove two. Whoever takes the last one wins. How can we analyze this? One way is to just list out all of the possible positions. For this game, that's the number of counters in the pile. So zero, one, two, and so on. And we can draw arrows between them to represent each possible move. So, for example, if there are four counters, we can take one and end up at three, or we can take two and end up at two. Let's draw in all the moves. So, which positions can we win from, and what strategy should we use? Well, if there are no counters, the other player took them all and won on the last turn. We'll call that a P position, since the previous player won. And if there are one or two, we can take them all and win immediately. We'll call those N positions, since the next player to move wins. How about three? Well, the next player can take one and end at two or can take two and end at one. But as we just saw, those are both end positions, so the other player has a winning move from there. So the next player can't win, which makes three a P position. And with four or five, the next player can go to three. And since that's a P position, the other player won't have a winning move. So four and five are both N positions. And 6 is a P position, since the only moves are to 5 and to 4, which are, again, both N positions. And so on. By now, you may have guessed the pattern. More generally, an N position is one where there's some way to go to a P position. And a P position is one where there isn't. That is, every possible move ends at an N position. As an exercise, see if you can use this rule to prove that the P positions for our takeaway game are exactly the multiples of three. Now let's get back to Nim. Here, I've drawn in every position with up to six counters with arrows for each possible move. And I've labeled each position as either P or N, based on the rule we just described. Okay, so now we've got some data. And we can start to see some hints of patterns. For instance, if there's only one pile, it's always an N position. And if every pile has one counter, then it's a P position if there's an even number, and N if there's an odd number. And in fact, all of our P positions seem to have an even sum. But it's still kind of hard to see the big picture. 
To do that, we'd want to look at a lot more positions. It's getting tedious to draw all these by hand, and it's already a tangled mess. So at this point, we might ask a programmer friend to code up the process for us. That lets us evaluate a whole lot of positions quickly. And we get p positions like 6, 10, 12, or 20, 39, 51, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And at this point, our programmer friend might say, Hey, those look familiar. Have you considered bitwise XOR? If you've never seen it before, bitwise XOR is an operation that takes two numbers in binary and in each column counts whether they're an even or an odd number of ones. So, for example, to get 10 XOR 6, we first write each number in binary and then look at the columns one at a time. This first column has one one in it, and one is odd, so the total is one. And the same for the second column. In this column, we have two ones, and two is even, so our total is zero. And this last column has no ones, and zero is even, so the total is also zero. So 10 x or 6 is 1100, which in decimal is 12. If you like, you can think of XOR as binary addition, but without carrying. In fact, it's like addition in a lot of ways. It's commutative, it's associative. So rather than calling it bitwise XOR, Game theorists call the operation nim addition, and we write it as a plus inside a circle, like so. Okay, that's all great, but how does any of it help us with nim? Well, if we look at our p positions, we see that each has a nim sum of zero, and all the n positions have nim sums that aren't zero. Why does that happen? Notice that if the sum is non-zero, as it is here, then there must be at least one bit in the total that's a 1. Choosing the first one, there must be a pile with a 1 in that same position. If we add the total to that pile, it turns out the pile becomes smaller, and the total becomes zero. That's not too hard to prove, so I'll leave it as an exercise. On the other hand, changing exactly one term in a sum will always change the total. So removing counters from one pile when the total is zero has to give us a total that's non-zero. That is, moving from a position with nim sum zero leaves a position with a non-zero sum. So we can move from any position with a non-zero sum to a position with some zero. And every move from a position with some zero yields a non-zero sum. And that's exactly how we classified P and N positions. So a NIM position is a P position if and only if the sum is zero. Returning to our original game with piles of sizes 3, 4, and 5, how can I win? Well, adding the piles, 3 plus 4 plus 5, with our nim addition, we get 2. And that's not zero, so this is an n position, which means there is some winning play. In this case, the only move that makes the sum zero is to turn this 3 into a 1 by removing two counters. And then, no matter what Aurora does, I can always force the sum back to zero. So no matter how cleverly she plays, she can't beat me. And now, I can finally claim my hard-earned victory. Once again, good game. Now, we have our winning strategy, and we could be happy with that, but there are always more questions to answer. 
For instance, does this help us find strategies for games that aren't NIM? What is this NIM sum really telling us anyway? And if there's NIM addition, is there also, say, NIM multiplication? Join me next time as we answer these questions and explore the NIMBERS. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.